Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. It's very obvious that audiences love that Joker. The Joker has become the most profitable comic book movie ever. Not the biggest, uh, not the biggest box office take, but the most profitable because it was not a very expensive movie to produce. This is not surprising if you've been following the uh, meteoric rise of the Joker. Uh, you can see that uh, the Joker only costs 55 to $60 million, and it's almost at a billion dollars uh, currently. So we're going to talk about that, about kind of what this means and, and uh, whether or not Hollywood is going to shift how it produces superhero movies because of this. And we're also going to talk about Warner Brothers' uh, amazing marketing person, Blair Rich, who is the marketing chief for Warner Brothers, and she did an interview with Variety yesterday. I think it was with um, Variety yesterday, and she basically said, uh, piss off. We knew what we were doing. We knew how to market the movie. This movie had nothing to do with Aurora. Um, it had nothing to do with The Dark Knight. Uh, people were panicked and, uh, you know, get bent. Uh, I mean, in a more polite way. But um, she said that Warner Brothers has been very responsible. Now, realize, of course, that Warner Brothers had to shut the media down because the clickbait headlines, the attempts to destroy this movie had just gotten completely out of control. And I think Warner Brothers handled it very, very well. They, they, uh, they told some of the media that they were not allowed to interview Joaquin Phoenix or Todd Phillips. Uh, during the premiere because they knew that they were going to ask loaded questions. Joaquin Phoenix walked out of, initially walked out of an interview uh, with a journalist because he asked very loaded questions about uh, potential violence related to this movie. And uh, Warner Brothers, uh, I really think, handled it very, very well. So before we get into the video, please subscribe. If you guys have not subscribed already, we're at about 71, 72,000 subs, hoping for 100,000 soon. Uh, it is getting harder to get found in YouTube. Make sure you're still subscribed. Sub counts definitely help us. So, okay, this is coming from Forbes.com. Scott Mendelson, who I can't tell if he's happy about this or not, but uh, Scott Mendelson, box office, Joker becomes the most profitable comic book movie ever, ever. With 304.2 million in North America alone after five weeks in theaters, Joker's new global take is around 953 million. Yeah, people said even conservatively, the Joker is absolutely going to break a billion dollars before the end of its theatrical run. Presuming it's 32% domestic, 68% overseas split holds, it'll have a new global cum of around 957 million by tonight. Yada yada. So here we go. Even conservatively, that will make the Todd Phillips directed and Joaquin Phoenix starring drama more profitable in terms of budget versus global gross than Jim Carrey's The Mask. Uh, the most profitable big comic book movies are Venom, uh, the original Batman, Deadpool, the original Ninja Turtles, uh, The Mask. In a nutshell, that means that DC Films and Warner Brothers Joker is the most profitable comic book movie of all time in a skewed way joker represents every studio's dream that it's a mid-budget 2d title 2d title that's pulling top tier blockbuster business without relying on china yeah that's huge like it broke a billion dollars without the chinese box office it broke a billion dollars on a shoestring budget and yeah i don't think it's been released in 3d has it uh all the showings around here are in 2d so that happens to be an r-rated psychological drama is a bonus so we've got the perfect storm of of things that should not exist uh in regards to this movie it, it's sort of the anti superhero movie it's r-rated it's low budget it's a psychological drama it's 2d not 3d because they can pad the numbers with 3d uh it did not play in china and it's going to be the most profitable comic book movie of all time do you think some rival studios maybe saw this coming? Maybe they had an inkling that this was going to happen? And maybe, just possibly, maybe, again, I'm putting on the, the tinfoil hat or mouse ears, uh, maybe some competitors were preemptively trying to weaponize media outlets to tank this movie. You know, uh, maybe they were because they did view it as a threat because they knew that, you know, if, if they could pull this off, an R-rated, low-budget movie didn't play in China, making bank, that that's going to change things. There's going to be a paradigm shift with the way that uh, Hollywood deals with superhero movies, possibly. Again, that's just speculation, but there was a hell of a lot of effort 
put into trying to destroy this movie. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit uh, with uh, Warner Brothers marketing head, uh, Blair Rich, who seems like she's really on top of things. And she's basically like the media was, was a problem and we were responsible. Uh, so maybe this is going to be a shift. Maybe these studios will finally realize that the media is not your friends. <laughs> They're not your friends. They want free stuff from you. They want access, but at the end of the day, uh, these, these uh, bloggers are not your friends. It's the third cheapest $900 million grocer of all time after Bohemian Rhapsody and The Lion King. The original Lion King, not the new Lion King, the 94 Lion King, which actually was a relatively low budget production for its time. In fact, uh, the team that worked on The Lion King were sort of the B team. Disney's B team. They weren't the A team. The Lion King was supposed to be kind of a filler movie and it wound up being a huge, huge hit. Uh, when it tops a billion worldwide the next week or so, it'll be the cheapest movie to do so with a budget just under the 63 million spent by Jurassic Park in 93. And that's, you know, I don't know what that is adjusted for inflation, but Jurassic Park, when it came out, was pretty expensive um, for the time. So up until last December, we hadn't seen a billion dollar grocer from Disney or Universal since Paramount's Transformers Age of Extinction in 2014. I still cannot believe Transformers 4, was that the fourth one, made a billion dollars. And they only did it because of China. Because that movie was hot trash. The Transformers movies, for the most part, are hot trash. I did like Bumblebee, though. I thought Bumblebee was actually really good. And I'm hoping they do a sequel to that one and keep the Transformers movie, movie franchise in line with Bumblebee. But I digress. I digress. Um, unlike Warner Brothers Aquaman, which did 1.148 billion worldwide with a $298 million in China and Spider-Man Far From Home 1.131 billion with 199 million in China, Joker will earn its billion plus without a 3D boost and without China. So this is huge. I mean, this is really, really big and this might force Hollywood to rethink things. When it passes The Dark Knight, it'll be the biggest grossing movie ever to not play in China. That's assuming it doesn't eventually get a Chinese play date. They might do a PG-13 version of it. Yeah, just take a couple of scenes out and they probably get away with it. But without China, it should still flirt with a global total over and under Aladdin at over a billion dollars. It'll have around 312 million domestic by the end of Sunday night. Um, it'll end up just over and under Guardians of the Galaxy, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Spider-Man 3. It'll outgrow Suicide Squad and sell more tickets than Man of Steel. Uh, if it passes Aquaman, Joker will be DC Comics' fourth biggest domestic grocer and their third biggest global total behind The Dark Knight Rises in Aquaman. It's possible that continued Oscar season legs could push its global total past Toy Story 4. Look at the movies it's passing and look at the studio behind those movies and look at the media attacking the Joker preemptively. I'm just... I'm just putting that out there. It's a it's a very curious observation. That is a big if. Yeah. It'll be it'll be Warner Brothers big Oscar flick on one hand, its success as a comic book movie about a tormented white dude who is victimized by society. Oh, come on, Scott. To the point of villainy may rub folks the wrong way. On the other hand, it's a monumental success despite being an old school movie. Maybe that's what people want. Maybe people just want to go back to basics. You know, remember when you know guys like Spielberg pulled off some really magical uh, magical cinema and they did it without these these massive massive budgets they just made really good movies and audiences uh, loved them they loved them and uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money to make a good movie you know you don't want a movie to look cheap but you don't have to spend a ton of money to make a good movie in fact it's gotten to a point now where Hollywood seems to think the more you spend on a movie the more successful it's going to be the more eye candy you throw at people the, the better it's going to be right uh, but that's not always the case so it's actually made more profit than endgame you know disney crowed about endgame being the biggest comic book movie ever and it's turning out to be the joker so let's go out and and look at this too this is uh blair rich who is warner brothers marketing chief and uh she is a very very smart woman she's a very smart woman she addressed a lot of the controversy in this interview now this was uh, floating around yesterday the day before and i caught it on twitter and um she's very well spoken and she basically said uh you know the media was part of the problem the media was part of the problem this is what uh what she said i, I think it's really important to note and make sure the truth is clear 
A lot of things were raised as often happens when the media firestorm starts to get combustible. There's a lot of clickbait and headlines. The truth is we always believed in the artistic power of this movie and the message of the movie, which was one of empathy. In my opinion, she said, the executive said the fear and criticism was tough to bear, but I think what my team and I learned, and it was a huge effort of people across the company, we really sort of kept our heads down and always had a very responsible campaign plan for this. We always leaned into the true tone of the film, the R-rated nature of it. Warner Brothers put out a statement that underscored the majority of people around the world had yet to see Joker and executives would not perpetuate an ill-informed news cycle. Art is not supposed to be censored. We're supposed to be able to tell stories and be bold while not disregarding safety, not while ever being disrespectful, but the movie was pulled into a conversation, quite frankly, it had nothing to do with. Uh, what they're cutting out of the text version of it is she goes on to talk about Aurora, and she said that guy was not even the Joker character. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, lies circulating that the Aurora shooter was... Uh, pretending to be the Joker, that there was a direct tie into the Dark Knight because of that, um, or Dark Knight Rises because of that, rather. And, and she said that was just not true, and that was perpetuated by the media. We never marketed the film as a broad DC film like Aquaman or Shazam or Wonder Woman, she said. We didn't market to young people. We had no consumer products. We embraced it as it was. Yeah, they weren't making Joker action figures, Joaquin Phoenix Joker action figures. They weren't throwing uh, his Joker on t-shirts. They weren't making Halloween masks. They literally just put the movie out there. And I don't think there's any tie-in merchandise for it. Um, if, if you see any Joker merchandise now, I think it's mostly the comic book version of the character. But remember, like Heath Ledger's Joker had an action figure. They had Halloween costumes. Uh, he was on t-shirts. I actually have a t-shirt from like 10 years ago with Heath Ledger's Joker. And they did not do that for this movie. They basically just put the movie out there without like you didn't have any tie-ins i mean there sure as hell wasn't a mcdonald's happy meal with the joker but they put a good movie out there and uh look what happens look what happens a good movie done at a good price and they told the media to go get bent and look what happens so again here's another article i'm gonna put a link to the original variety article that has that full video interview. I don't want to run the video interview in this video because I'll probably get demonetized, but it's definitely worth watching. Nobody is bringing up, though, the fact that she basically said that the um, that Aurora that had nothing to do with Batman, had nothing to do with the Joker. Um, and she specifically said that. So uh, here's a version from Heroic Hollywood. They talk about some other quotes. Uh, she said, as we were putting things out, of course, we saw huge strength and affinities with comic book fans and with gamers, but we also had an entire campaign against cinephiles, people who like sophisticated films, uh, people who go to art house movies. This is a movie that kind of functions on a lot of those levels. And I think that movie just tapped a nerve. Yeah, so it's, they they did it right. They did it right. And the, the best thing they did, I think, in regards to this movie is they ignored social media they ignored the bloggers and look what happens it becomes the most profitable comic book movie of all time i think the joker is absolutely going to change things i think this is escalation uh to borrow a term from the dark knight i think that the studios are going to look at joker and be like you know what we've been playing to these bloggers we've been playing to twitter we've been playing to tumblr maybe we shouldn't maybe we shouldn't do that anymore maybe we should just put good movies out there and let them succeed or fail on their own merit who would have figured thinking about printing your own comic books graphic novel or manga we recommend our friends over at print ninja we've been using print ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to ClownfishSupport.com. That's ClownfishSupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.